Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Mahdi and right now I'm standing in front of the Prophet's Mosque in the luminous Medina. In this video I'm going to show you something very beautiful that only very few Muslims know about, which is the College of the Prophet's Mosque. That's right, there is a higher education institution within the walls of the Prophet's Mosque where Muslims from all over the world, men and women alike, study Islam up to the point that they get a bachelor degree in Islamic studies. So this video is going to be a documentary about this institution, which will include the information about the study program in the college, how to enroll at this institution, benefits that students get while they study here, and many other interesting things that you won't find anywhere but in this documentary. So get ready and we'll get started! By the way, before we keep going, I want to remind you that there is a documentary about the Islamic University of Medina you can watch on this channel. It turned out to be very informative, feel free to watch it the very first video of this channel. Firstly, the college has a YouTube channel, which is all in Arabic, and this channel has a very good introductory video in Arabic that I'm about to show you with my translation into English and my voice. I really liked how this film was made, it's of a very good quality, the language that's used in the video is very eloquent. This way, right off the bat, you will get to know some valuable information about this institution. Let's watch it. The Luminous Medina is the place of obtaining Iman, where the noble Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, emigrated to, and the shelter of the hearts of Muslims. From the precincts of the Prophet's mosque, the light of knowledge shined to be spread all over the world. In this very place, their dear companions were sitting around the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, learning the Noble Qur'an and seeking useful knowledge, studying themselves and teaching others. And after them, there came the followers with goodness, who walked on their way and followed their path. Thus, the study circles continued one generation after another in this blessed mosque. Within the framework of Saudi Kingdom care programs for the two sanctuaries on one side and its support in the field of education spreading the knowledge on the other side, the academic education has its fair share, which resulted in opening the Al-Haram al-Makki Institute, then after that in opening the Prophet's Masjid Institute, and after that in opening higher educational division alongside the Prophet's Masjid Institute, and on the 26th of Zilukarda, in 1436 year of Hijri, His Excellency the General President of the Prophet's Masjid Affair, Shaykh Dr. Abdul Rahman bin Abdul Aziz al-Sudais, issued the decision of changing the name of the higher educational division to the College of the Prophet's Mosque to implement noble goals and important visions which are befitting the place of this blessed mosque. So it took upon itself to spread the message of Sharia knowledge accordingly with the world standards, maintaining a high quality of education, taking into consideration the sacredness of the place, the foundation of Islamic manhaj, and the strength of this foundation to graduate excellent students of knowledge who grace themselves with moderation and temperance, following the way of the pious predecessors, and contribute to the development of community and society. The college is divided into the division of the Holy Quran and its studies, the division of the Sunnah and its studies, and the division of Sharia. And after the release of this introductory film, two more divisions were added in the college, the division of Aqidah and the division of Arabic language. Let's keep watching. Despite the proliferation of Sharia faculties in the universities all over the world, the students of the College of the Prophet's Masjid have excellent benefits over others. The most significant of these benefits are that the study process takes place within the walls of the Prophet's Mosque, therefore its students get the reward of one who fights in jihad in the cause of Allah, and studying in the college is available for citizens and residents of any age. The college accepts the applicants for studying twice a year via its website on the internet, and the entrance examination is held for those who fit the conditions. Also, the college supports the educational process by providing it with enriching aspects of student activities, 
which include courses, lectures and visits. As for the service of society, the college released a program called Tamkin, a program Irshad, and a number of basic courses. Believing in its role towards its students, the deanship of college spares no effort to take care of its students who come over to the Prophet's Masjid with the desire of goodness, responding to the commandment of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, when he said, People will come to you seeking knowledge. So when you see them, say to them, Welcome, welcome, in obedience to the injunctions of the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, and instruct them in knowledge. نحن لم نتعلم العلم ولم نأتي لهذا المكان إلا لكي نقتدي برسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الذي نرجو من الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يكون شفيعنا يوم القيامة وقد أوصى صحابته رضي الله عنهم أن يعتنوا بطلبة العلم وهذا هو الواجب علينا نحن كمسؤولين في الرئاسة ومسؤولين في إدارة الكلية أن نعتني بطلبة العلم بقدر ما نستطيع نوفر لهم المناهج المناسبة ونوفر لهم الراحة ونوفر لهم حتى الأمور المادية قدر المستطاع فإن هذا من ما ينبغي أن نقوم به كمسؤولين وإن شاء الله تعالى إن شاء الله تعالى أننا, أننا نستطيع أن نحقق كل ما يتمناه الطلاب وأن يكون ذلك معينا لهم على أداء رسالتهم وطلبهم للعلم الذي هو من أجل القربات وأفضل الطاعات Thus, the study circles continued in this blessed mosque, generation after generation, to become now a world prestigious university, which is desired by the students from all over the world, who drink from this clean source of knowledge, and revive the Sunnah of the Chosen, peace and blessings be upon him. The College of the Prophet's Mosque, the source of Sharia knowledge, from its first source. Beautiful, isn't it? And regarding the reward of one who is studying in the Prophet's mosque, there is an authentic hadith narrated by Abu Hurairah, radiallahu anhu, who said, I heard the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, say, Whoever comes to this mosque of mine, and only comes for a good purpose, such as to learn or to teach, his status is like that of one who fights in jihad in the cause of Allah. Narrated by Imam Ahmad, Ibn Majah, and others. And just think about how much of a reward a student can get while studying here for four years. Let it sink in and we'll move on. The College of the Prophet's Mosque is a legal and scientific college as it's located within the corridors of the Prophet's Mosque. The number of college students is growing at a fast pace. In 2016, the number of students was only 567 students. But today, at the beginning of 2022, this number has increased to 1,623 students, of which 500 are female students. College starts at 7.30 from Sunday to Thursday, because in Arab countries, the work week starts on Sunday. The teacher sits in a chair, and the students gather around him to listen to the lecture. This is exactly how seeking knowledge was like during the time of the Prophet companions and tabi'in. There is also a break during which breakfast is served right in the mosque itself. I think this is the dream of any Muslim to sit like this in the Prophet's mosque and study the religion of Allah. Now I'm going to show you a short interview I did with Hisham who works at the administration of the college. In this video he answers a few important questions, so let's watch it. أشكرك للمبافقة على هذه المقابلة ولذلك استعددت بعض الأسئلة تتعلق بكلية المسجد النبوي فالسؤال الأول هل يوجد الفرق بين كلية المسجد النبوي وجامعات السعودية عموما في جودة التعليم بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما المناهج ونوعيتها فتكاد تكون واحدة المقررات في الجامعات السعودية في كلية الشريعة في كليات الدعوة وأصول الدين وكليات اللغة العربية تكاد تكون متفقة مع مقررات كلية المسجد النبوي إلا في بعض المقررات التي ترى كلية المسجد النبوي والمجلس العلمي لها أنها تصلح لفئة الطلاب من 
طلاب الكلية أكثر من من بقية المقررات إلا أن جودة التعليم واحدة لا تختلف بل ربما في بعض المقررات تكون جودة التعليم في كلية المسجد النبوي أعلى بحكم أن الطلاب ليس لأحدهم غرض الشهادة إنما يريد العلم تجد أن المقررات قوية طيب إذا الشخص الذي تخرج في كلية المسجد النبوي يحق له الالتحاق بالبرنامج الماجستير نعم. في الجامعات نعم يلتحق ببرامج الماجستير وقد تخرج عدد من الطلاب من كليه المسجد النبوي والتحقوا ببرامج الماجستير في مختلف التخصصات ما شاء داخل الله المملكه وخارجها طيب والسؤال الثاني قال فضيله الشيخ محمد ابن احمد الحضيري وهو كان عميد شؤون الطلاب في الكليه في الفيلم التعريفي نوافر لهم يعني للطلاب المناهج المناسبة ونوافر لهم الروحة ونوافر لهم حتى الأمور المادية فكيف يحصل توفير الطلاب بالأمور المادية؟ كلية تعقد اتفاقيات مع الجهات المعنية برعاية طلبة العلم كجمعية رعاية طلبة العلم وبعض الأوقات التي تخص طلبة العلم بريعها فيسكنون فالسكن شبه مضمون طلاب كلية المسجد النبوي نرفع اسماء الطلاب الكلية إلى هذه الأوقاف أو الجمعية وتستقبلهم في السكن بلا مقابل أو بمقابل بسيط جدا يعني يسمى مقابلا رمزيا ليكون ريعا للوقف الذي يسكن الطالب ويوفر الوقف في الغالب الطعام والشراب لطلاب الكلية ثلاث وجبات في اليوم يوفر أو. وجبتين ووجبة الإفطار توفرها كلية المسجد النبوي داخل أرواح الحرم في فسحة تكون بين المحاضرات توفر كلية الدخل للطلاب على شكل مكافآت ليست منتظمة وليست رسمية لكنها تسعى دائما إلى أن توفر للطالب مكافأة قدر 500 ريال شهريا شهريا نعم في نهاية الفصل الدراسي أو الأصل أنها تكون شهرية بشكل شهري لكن قد تتأخر أحيانا وإذا صرفت وودع المبلغ في حساب الكلية يصرف مباشرة وللطلاب مكافآت أخرى فوق المكافآت المنتظمة تكون للمتميزين مثلا أو لمن حصل على جائزة في مسابقة ونحو هذا فيعطى جائزة بقدر ما حصله بقدر ما حصل عليه وآخر السؤال إنه ليس بسؤال بل كما سمعت أنك معلم في كلية المسجد النبوي ولذلك أردت أن أسألك أو أطلب منك النصيحة للطلاب حتى ينجحوا في دراسة كلية المسجد النبوي And Hisham gave a truly beautiful answer to this question which I will show you at the end of this video First, let's get acquainted with the academic life of the college the specializations or departments of the college are the Department of Sharia that takes care of Islamic jurisprudence, its principles, rules and purposes, and qualifying specialists in jurisprudence, its fields and purposes to contribute to serving the local and global community. The registration for this department is open for male and female students alike. The Department of Quran takes care of the Book of Allah for memorization and interpretation of the Holy Quran. This department is intended only for male students and female students cannot join this department. The Department of Sunnah takes care of the Prophet's Sunnah and its sciences, serving and preserving it and qualifying students of knowledge specialized in the field of the Prophet's Sunnah and its sciences with the knowledge of other legal sciences in the service of the local and global community. The Department of Aqidah aims to teach the correct creed and works to clarify the deviant beliefs so that Muslims could be distanced from them. It specializes in teaching students proper ways of da'wah so they could contribute to spreading the correct image of the moderate Islamic faith that promotes and establishes the Muslim society. And last but not least, the Department of Arabic Language. This department is concerned with the language of the Noble Qur'an in addition to its literature, aims to qualify specialists in the Arabic language in addition to mastering its literature. Here we have a picture with the name Study Systems and Exams. It's also in Arabic. Let's go step by step and take a look what it has to say. Firstly, it says that the study process in the college takes four years or eight semesters to graduate. Then it states that every study year includes two semesters. Each semester lasts not less than 15 weeks. 
every day a student has four or five hours of studying. Every lecture lasts 50 minutes. Here it gives some information about the study dates and dates of exams. We will talk about it later when I show you a plan of the semester. And in the end it says that the student who didn't attend more than 25% of classes for a subject, he won't be allowed to take a final exam for this subject. For example, if a student had 100 classes for a subject in one semester, let's say for Hadith, and he attended only 74 lessons or less out of 100, he won't be allowed to take a final exam. The same rule is applied in the Islamic University of Medina. Students must attend classes. Attendance is important. Here we have the study curriculum of all five departments of the college for all eight semesters. Here is the study plan in Arabic for the Department of Qur'an. Here we have the study plan for the Department of Sunnah. Here is the picture that shows the study plan for Sharia. And by the way, it has more study hours than any other department. Here we have the curriculum for Arabic language department. And last but not least is the department of Aqidah. As you can see, it has less hours than any other department, but still, all the departments are highly beneficial for a student of knowledge. Let's briefly go through the study plan in the department of Aqidah. For the first semester, we have 19 hours for 10 subjects, 2 hours for almost every subject. And these subjects are Holy Quran Level 1, Introduction for Studying the Creed, Introduction for Studying Sharia, Islamic Culture, Prophet's Biography, The History of the Two Sanctuaries, Introduction for Studying the Arabic Language, Studies of Hadith Level 1, Introduction for Studying Sects, Research Methodology. In the second semester we've got the same 19 hours a week, but it's only 8 subjects. But the number of study hours increases for some subjects. And these subjects are Holy Quran Level 2, Introduction of Quran Studies, uh, the Creed Level 1, Fiqh Level 1, Ahadith Jawami' al Kalam, and Nahu, which is the crucial part of Arabic language, Studies of Hadith Level 2. Now let's skip to the seventh semester that has also 19 hours for 8 subjects, such as Eloquency, Sects Level 4, the Creed Level 7, the Fundamentals of Fiqh, and Nahu Level 5, Christian Religion Study, History and Study of Narrations, Sources of Knowledge and Education. And after the eighth semester, the study is over as a student graduates from the college. Let's take a look at the college academic calendar. It contains all important dates for the first and second semester. The first semester has already passed, so let's analyze only the second semester right off the bat. Because in general there is no difference between the first and the second semester. So here is a picture of the academic calendar for the second semester. It is in Arabic, so I translated it into English as usually. And the first line tells us about the possibility of taking an academic leave from the 2nd to the 13th of January 2022. So if a student for some reason cannot study in the second semester, then there is an opportunity to take an academic leave. The second line announces the beginning of the holidays after the first semester, from January 6th. The third line with a white background indicates the beginning of the second semester on January 16th. The next line talks about the possibility of changing the curriculum. Then the, the next line shows us the information about the possibility of taking i'tidhar. What is i'tidhar, you might ask? Uh, this is the same as academic leave, but during semester. So, if a student during the semester has an urgent need to suspend his studies, then he takes i'tidhar for a semester, solves his problems and returns to studies in the next semester. They can take it from January 16th until April 24th. The next line talks about the possibility of taking exams that weren't taken in the last semester for a reason. So if a student didn't take the exams in the previous semesters and he had an excuse, then he takes those exams in these days. Then we see the extra weekend. In our countries, extra days off are tied to public holidays. Here in Saudi, they are given to students simply to ensure that the student regains energy for study. And of course, extra weekends are given for Islamic holidays, like Eid al-Fitr. As you can see, Eid al-Fitr starts on April 25th and lasts up until May 8th. 
i.e. almost two weeks. Then additional holidays are given on May 25th and 26th, and then the exams of the second semester begin and they last from May 28th to June 9th, and on June 16th summer holidays begin. Here is the table that shows how students are graded. There are four general types of grades, it's either Momtas, which means excellent, or good, or acceptable, or fail. And just like in the Islamic University, there are layers in between. You can see a grade that lies within the range from 95 to 100 is classified as not just excellent, but highly excellent. From 85 to 90, we have Jayid Jid and Murtafiar, which loosely is translated as more than very good. And every single grade in the College of the Prophet's Mosque is classified accordingly to this table. In the end, all the grades for all the subjects are summed up into the final GPA. If this final GPA lies within the range from 4.5 to 5.0, then the final grade classification of a diploma will be Mumtaz, or excellent. From 3.75 to 4.5 is Jayid Jidden, very good. From 2.75 to 3.75 it's Jayid, good. From 2.0 to 2.75 it's Makbul, acceptable. There is a list of requirements applicants have to fulfill if they want to enroll at the College of the Prophet's Mosque. There are certain requirements for male students and there are certain requirements for female students. Let's start off with the requirements for male students. You can find them on the website of the college, but it's all in Arabic, so I had no choice but reinforce the intelligence of Google Translate. Now you can see them in English. It has nine conditions. But don't be afraid of the number, it's not that scary. Let's go through all of them one by one. The first one is obvious. Applicants have to have a diploma from high school to enroll at a higher education institution, just like in any other country. The second condition, condition states, no more than five years can pass since you obtained your high school diploma. But the good news is that the administration makes many exceptions in this condition, especially for foreigners. There are students in this college who are in their 40s, and one student who is almost 50 years old. All his life he worked as a teacher in his, in his country, and then recently he enrolled at the college. So you shouldn't worry about this condition because they make exceptions. The third condition is to be a person of good ethics. The fourth one is about passing interviews. Well, I asked one brother who successfully passed the interviews about how they are held. He told me that there are two interviews that applicants go through. Both of them are held within the walls of the Prophet's Mosque. The first one is a written examination that includes common questions about Islam and specific questions that are related to the division applicants have chosen, like Hadith or Sharia or Quran. If they pass this written exam, they move on to the next one, which is an oral exam, where they will be asked different questions in regard of Islam in general and the division they've chosen. If they pass it, they will enroll at the college. Of course, if they've met all the other conditions. So let's keep going. The fifth condition is to be medically fit. I asked one brother who enrolled at the college whether he had to undergo some, some tests to prove his good medical condition. He said that no medical tests were required, so I guess you just need to look healthy to meet this requirement. The sixth condition is specifically for someone who works for Saudi government or Saudi companies. If he wants to enroll at the College of the Prophet's Mosque, he has to obtain a permission from his company he works for because his company brought him to Saudi Arabia for job, not for studying. But if the employer allows him to study at the college, the administration of the college will accept it and this condition will be met. The seventh condition is like the sixth one, but for those who don't work for companies, but work for Saudi citizens. And this one is very important, so listen carefully. As you can see, only Saudi citizens or residents of, of Saudi Arabia can enroll at the college. Therefore, you have to be a resident of Saudi Arabia to enter the institution. And you can become a resident of Saudi if you find a sponsor. Who is a sponsor? It's a Saudi citizen who hires you. Ideally, you will need to find a Saudi citizen who will officially hire you. You will arrive in Saudi, he will give you permission to study in the college, and that's it. This condition will be fulfilled. 
Many students from abroad who enrolled at the college, they used this way. It's absolutely legal. And in regard of finding a sponsor, I will make another video on this topic and put the link in the description, inshallah. The eighth condition is clear. You shouldn't have previously been terminated from the college for academic or disciplinary reasons or had previously been terminated from another university for disciplinary reason. Fair enough. The ninth one is not something substantial. If you've met the previous eight conditions, inshallah, you will enroll at the college if you meet one more condition that hinges on which section of the college you want to join. To join the Department of Sharia ah or, or Quran, you have to memorize 15 parts of the Quran before enrolling at the college, which is half of the Quran. And in order to join the Department of Sunnah, Aqidah or Arabic language, you will only need to memorize five parts of the Quran. And in regard to this condition, whether it's hard on people or not, I can only say, if you want something big, you have to work for it respectively. To memorize five parts of the Quran when the prize is joining the college of the Prophet's mosque should be very easy. And as for required documents, it's quite simple. All you need is a copy of resident ID card. Every resident of Saudi Arabia has it. Uh, also, you will need high school certificate, application which is filled out online. The admission happens twice a year, therefore they accept applications twice a year. And as it states here, you can follow the dates of admission and registration via the college account on Twitter. Uh, that's what an announcement looks like on Twitter. This year they started accepting applications on the 25th of November and the entrance exams start on the 3rd of January. And don't forget that admission along with the entrance exam happen twice a year, not only once. You will also need an approval from your sponsor that he allows you to study in the college, two recommendation letters. You need to find two students, whether from the college or from the Islamic University, and ask them to write a recommendation letter for you for example, I'm a student of the Islamic University and already have written recommendation letters for a few people from my country. Just ask around in your Muslim community for students in Saudi Arabia and you will find them inshallah. We will also need to provide photos, relational file, the color is yellow, brand from Abashir that clarifies the expiry date of the resident ID card for non-Saudi. For non well, there is an app in Saudi Arabia which is used these days by everybody. It provides <clears throat> lots of things and one of them is that it shows the expiry date of your identity card. This requirement is easy to meet. Let's move on to the requirements for female students. I've got to say that they are harder to meet than it is for male students because the number of female students is smaller, therefore the competition is higher and so are requirements. Why is it so? Because in general people who graduate from this college are expected to become Imams in their communities. And Imams are men. So it makes sense that the number of male students is a lot higher. But despite that they also teach female students in the college of the Prophet's mosque. Alhamdulillah. Let's take a look at the requirements. It's all what male students have to meet like to pass a written and oral exam, be medically fit, plus firstly the GPA from high school must be very good, which is B, or at the very least good, which is C. And secondly, a female student must memorize 15 parts of the Quran before enrolling at the college. You'll have to work on this condition. And I don't know how strict this condition is, I mean, maybe if you are a foreigner, and have memorized, let's say, only 10 parts of the Qur'an, maybe they will accept you. It's entirely possible, but I can't guarantee that. As for required documents, it's all the same as for male students, except female students don't need recommendation letters, instead they need a written consent of the guardian or in Arabic wali. I want to add one more very interesting and amazing thing about the educational life in the Prophet's mosque. In the Prophet's mosque, in addition to this college, there is also a middle and high school. 
united in a so-called mahat. And the number of students in this mahat exceeds the number of students in the college. And all of them also study within the walls of the Prophet's mosque. The curriculum in this mahat is focused on the study of Islamic sciences, therefore such subjects as chemistry, physics, etc. are either not present in the study plan or are studied superficially. The mahat entrance exam is a lot easier to pass, which is why non-Arab Muslims and their wives are more likely to enter this mahat than college. Of course, most of the students in this mahat are at a young age, but this mahat accepts students of all ages. Therefore, it turns out that in one class, half of the students are young brothers, teenagers, and the rest are brothers who are at their 20, 30, and even 40 years old, all united by one goal, to study Islam in the Prophet's mosque and benefit from this knowledge. Well, as the film is coming to an end, let's hear Hisham's advice to students for finding success in the path of seeking knowledge. النصيحة العامة هي قصد رضا الله جل وعلا طلب رضا الله سبحانه وتعالى بالإخلاص في طلب العلم وعدم طلب الدنيا بالعلم الشرعي وأن لا يكون غرض الإنسان أن يعلو على الناس وأن يكون غرضه رفع الجهل عن نفسه أولا ثم رفع الجهل عن أهله ومن حوله كما قال الله جل وعلا للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وأنذر عشيرتك الأقربين ثم يبدأ الإنسان بتوسع في الدعوة إلى الله جل وعلا بعد أن يرفع الجهل عن نفسه ثانيا فيما يخص الكلية تحديدا أنصح الطلبة بأن يجعلوا الحرم جامعة وهو كذلك بالدراسة النظامية في الصباح داخل الكلية وبحضور دروس أهل العلم داخل الحرم من دروس العقيدة والحديث والتفسير والفقه وكل فنون الشريعة بلا استثناء دروسها في الحرم موجودة إن توفر يقصد الطالب إذا انضم إلى كلية المسجد النبوي أيضا الانضمام إلى حلقات المسجد النبوي حلقات القرآن الكريم وحلقات المثن المكثفة ما في ذلك من تقصيد علمي عالي يجعل الطالب على بينة في دراسته ويعني لا يملأ وقت الطالب إلا بالخير طيب طيب جزاكم الله خيرا وهذه الأسئلة فحسب حياك الله يا شيخ مهدي وفقك الله وإسأل الله جل وعلا أن يبلغنا وإياكم العلم النافع والعمل الصالح أن نولي ذلك القادر عليه آمين as you can see, the College of the Prophet's Mosque is a perfect place where you can seek Islamic knowledge at the quality level. The administration of the college has devoted such great effort to make a study environment suitable for students. And what a beautiful opportunity! Just imagine, you made a decision to enroll at this college. And you did it. And then you studied the religion of Allah here in college within the walls of the Prophet's Mosque getting a reward of one who is fighting in the cause of Allah by simply studying in this place. Then you get back home, benefit Muslims with the knowledge that you acquired here, and then you die and find all of it in front of you in the last day, multiplied immeasurably in the paradise. Subhanallah. May Allah make this college beneficial for Muslims all over the world. And thank you for watching this documentary. The next documentary is going to be, inshallah, about the University of Jeddah, because I've already found ways to collaborate with the administration of Jeddah University at this project. If you are interested in the universities of Saudi Arabia, then subscribe to this channel, because I'm going to make more documentaries like this, where I will provide the valuable information about the universities of Saudi Arabia that you probably won't find anywhere else. Also, if you're interested in learning Arabic, there are lessons on this channel where I'm teaching Arabic based on the Medina University curriculum. Feel free to share this documentary with other Muslims. Maybe this video will inspire some of them to actually enroll at the college and Muslims will benefit from it and you'll be the reason of that. Wa khayran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.